Competitive Pokemon has a lot of layers to it, from the Pokemon that you use, to the abilities, to moves, to how a Pokemon is trained, and of course, the items that they hold. Held items seem like a bit of an overlooked topic in discussion videos when it comes to competitive Pokemon, but I think that in recent generations, we've actually gotten more and more useful items that were introduced. But along the way, we have been given some pretty bad items that just don't have a use case in VGC. Today, let's talk about useless items in competitive Pokemon. We won't be including the obviously useless items like Pokeballs or whatever, but we'll limit it to items that feel like they're going somewhere and just fail to deliver. If you enjoyed this video at any point in time, do me a favor, leave a like on the video and subscribe because we are on the way to 100,000 subscribers. Anyways, let's get started. The Ability Shield is a new held item introduced into Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Reading its description, you can see just how niche of an item it is. The Ability Shield prevents the user from having its ability altered in any way. This includes things like Mummy, Skill Swap, Roleplay, etc. But its only real competitive niche is that the Ability Shield prevents the Ability Mold Breaker from working on the user. For example, if a Hatterene with Magic Bounce holds the Ability Shield and a Mold Breaker Tinkaton uses Stealth Rock on it, the rocks will be bounced back by Magic Guard, despite the fact Mold Breaker should allow the Tinkaton to bypass this ability. It's like a reverse card for a reverse card. To be honest, this item was clearly made for Terra Raid battles to allow your Pokemon to not have its ability disabled by the Raid Pokemon, but it still has some kind of functionality in competitive Pokemon, so I do want to include that. Next up are the Apecot and Ganlon Berries. While these are two different items, they function almost exactly the same way, so we're keeping them together. The Apecot and Ganlon Berries will both activate when the holder is at 25% health or lower and increase the user's special defense or defense respectively. This item's a really good example of how to make an item that's just really never gonna come in clutch. Why bother increasing your defense stats when the Pokemon's already at death's door? It's the equivalent of putting a helmet on after you crash a motorcycle. Yeah, occasionally these items may matter, but you know what berry would prevent you from getting KO'd much more effectively. The Citrus Berry, or even Pinch Berries if you really want something that activates at 25% if you want to insist on that. If there were any viable users of these berries, they'd have to be Pokemon that can comfortably get this low of health and then recover it back. These would be your Toxapexes and your Garganicals, but they simply get far more value and longevity out of running Healing Berries or Leftovers. Yeah, these berries are pretty useless. Okay, while these two items are pretty useless in VGC, I am somewhat of a binding band enthusiast. Once again, these items are different, but they both have similar functions involving trapping moves, so we'll just do them together. The Grip Claw will extend your trapping moves like Fire Spin, Sand Tomb, or Bind to last 7 turns instead of 4 to 5. When you take into account the fact that these trapping moves deal 1 8th of the opponent's health and damage, this could actually be a really fun item to use. The issue is that trapping moves are already not terribly strong in VGC. Any Pokemon that wants to run a trapping move with this item will need to be bulky enough to survive 7 turns of damage without leftover recovery and not be able to deal enough damage to otherwise justify using it as a stall Pokemon. This list of Pokemon can be argued to be Toxapex and well, yeah, that's that's basically it. Just run Toxic at that point. As for the Binding Band, it's actually much more salvageable, but it's not great. This item simply makes it so trapping moves deal 1 6 of the opponent's health and damage each turn instead of 1 8th. So Pokemon who use this item don't need to survive nearly as long as with the Grip Claw, making the list of viable users much larger. I actually made a team around this item where I combined Binding Band Sand Tomb Hippowdon with Salt Cure Garganical to create the Blender. Because Salt Care already deals 1 8th of the opponent's health and damage, if you double target a Pokemon with these moves when accounting for all the chip damage including Sandstorm and the trapping move in Salt Care, each turn the Pokemon will take 30% of its health and damage. So if on the initial turn you deal 40%, that means that that Pokemon is trapped, can't switch out, and will just faint after a single protect. It's actually really fun. But like I said, it's not that good. Now, the Luminous Moss is actually conceptually a pretty interesting item, but it's far too niche to ever really see any competitive success. This item increases the user's special defense stat by one stage if hit by a water type move, but only once. Unless you're running a fire, rock, or ground type, it's likely that you won't get hit by a water move all that often, and on top of that, if you're using one of those typings, the initial water type attack is probably going to hurt a little too much to be able to use the item and make it worth running. It does have a counterpart in the Absorb Bulb though, which might seem similarly useless, but where the Luminous Moss boosts special defense, the Absorb Bulb will increase special attack. This actually does have some strategies that can be used around it, including but not limited to Diet Colossal in Generation 9. Stick with the Assault Vest on this one though, okay? The metronome is unfortunately not as cool as the move. 
where the move is a little fun thing that'll make your Pokemon use a random move. This item ironically incentivizes the exact opposite. This item will cause the user's chosen move to increase in power slightly each time it's used consecutively, up to a maximum of double power after six uses. Now, while this is actually a pretty niche useful item in singles, in doubles, it's much harder to get any use out of it. Because VGC matches have four Pokemon on the field at any given time, you're more than likely going to want to click protect or switch up your move at some point in the game to be in a better position. But to be honest, the only Pokemon that could really use this item in VGC would be Pokemon that can afford to snowball using the exact same attack like Dracovish or possibly Fluttermane? That one's kind of up in the air, not really though. But you get much more use out of Scarf and Booster Energy on those two respectively anyways. For this reason, you get a lot more value out of items like the Life Orb or boosting items like Charcoal, which give an immediate benefit to your Pokemon's attacks rather than just requiring such a big commitment like the metronome. The Starf Berry is a held item which, when consumed, will raise a random stat on the user by two stages. Really fun, but not terribly useful. There's not much more to this item to cover here, like it's not used in VGC all that often and I'm just kind of being the fun police here. Maybe you could use it on like a really fat Pokemon that wants to click Stored Power. Stored Power being a psychic move that increases in power for each stat boost you have in any stat, but yeah, this is kind of just a bad berry. The Sticky Barb is interesting. Some Pokemon have high base stats, others have a broken ability. I have a Sticky Barb in my shoe. Guys, please help me. Uh, so yeah, this item's really funny. Not terribly viable though. The Sticky Barb is an item that deals one eighth of the user's health and damage to itself each turn the user's holding it. However, this item is given to any Pokemon that hits the holder with a contact move if they're not already holding an item. Yeah, this thing is not really gonna work in most situations unless you trick it or you switcheroo, because more often than not, Pokemon and VGC are already gonna be holding an item in battle, so this won't transfer at all. Along with that massive downside, you get much more value out of moves like Toxic or even Trapping moves. My buddy Michael and I even tested it out to see if running it with Knockoff would allow it to instantly be transferred to a Pokemon, but it doesn't work. The hypothetical best users of this item would be anything with access to the ability Klutz, which would make held items have no effect on the user, or Magikarp Pokemon like Clefable, which can also pretty reliably run this item. However, they do get a lot more value out of other items in VGC, leftovers, you know, the usual suspects. This item is super weird and has really not seen any competitive success in VGC. The Utility Umbrella is a pretty interesting addition to Generation 8, and it's not really that useful either. This item will cause the holder of it to ignore the effects of rain and sun. Specifically, this is useful for switching in on rain-boosted moves from Pokemon like Kyogre, or sun-boosted moves from Pokemon like Torkoal, specifically Eruption. Like, you can switch in on basically any other move from Torkoal. But there are many options that fulfill this purpose and then some, like the Assault Vest, or Berries. On top of that, it doesn't allow the holder to deal full damage with fire or water moves when the other weather is up. Despite the description kind of leading you towards that conclusion, it confused a lot of people, but no, it doesn't do that. Honestly, if the item was reworked to do that though, I could see this item being used occasionally on VGC teams to allow your Rain Sweeper to hit even harder in Sun. I mean, just imagine being a Palafin with a Utility Umbrella and having that item allow the Palafin to click Jet Punch in the Sun and still one-shot your Torkoal. That'd be pretty absurd. The Focus Band is the most useless item you never want to see in competitive Pokemon. This is a much less successful younger sibling to the Focus Sash. While the Focus Sash allows for the user to live any attack on 1 HP, granted the holder is at full health, the Focus Band allows the user to live any attack at 1 HP, no matter how low their HP stat is. 10% of the time. So yeah, basically you don't have an item 9 out of 10 times, and this item is only really slapped onto Pokemon that have no better option, which is really not that common. The only upside is that it can activate multiple times, but I just don't see that happening in tournament, at least not without a really long post being made by the other player. That being said, this item may be useless compared to other items, but it's almost certainly seen some major success in VGC tournaments, I just don't know where. The Destiny Knot makes the opposing Pokemon fall in love if the holder falls in love with them. How romantic. I'll, I'll keep that in mind next time I get hit with the Tract in a VGC match. Wait, this actually happened once. Finally, we have the Float Stone. It's like if the air balloon called off a of work and needed to have someone cover his shift. The Float Stone simply halves the weight of the user, and I tried to find a use case for this, and all I could really come up with was allowing Gastron to live a Grass Knot and recover off the damage, thus outclassing the Grass-reducing Rindo Berry in this one situation, since it'll technically activate multiple times. It's a held item. It doesn't get consumed, though. Like, it's, you know. However, heavier Pokemon could also find use for this item to lower damage from Low Kick. Granted, they don't already get more use from a Chopple Berry if they're, like, 
like a dark or rock type. Looking at you, Tyranitar. With that, I've covered basically every useless item in VGC, and there's definitely a few I could have included, like the big root, but that's much more debatable, and people in the comments would say, no, my big root Wo Chen is actually good. You fool, run leftovers. I wanted to keep it to items that you really have to force onto a Pokemon to make any use out of them, but let me know what items you find useless in the comment section down below, and leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Also, before you go, be sure to check out the playlist of my edited content at the end card, and subscribe, because there's a lot more of this on my channel. Oh, and comment what topics you want me to cover next, I might be running out of ideas. There's a lot to discuss in competitive Pokemon, but I want to know what you guys want to see. If you enjoy my content and want to support my channel even further, be sure to check out my Patreon. By donating as little as $1 a month, you can see your name at the end of this video here, like all these beautiful people. But yeah, liking and subscribing are more than enough. Thanks for watching, bye.